And so now it is my great pleasure to honor one of our most accomplished scholar alumni with a very special award. The Rotary Alumni Global Award celebrates alumni whose service activities and professional achievements exemplify the Rotary ideal of service above self. This award was first presented in 1995 and has honored parliamentarians, ambassadors, educators, and humanitarians. Recipients have served as global citizens, having an impact on the international scene. Candidates for this award are nominated by Rotary Districts, and the winner is annually selected by the Rotary International Board of Directors and the Rotary Foundation Trustees. And so the winner of the 2018-2019 Rotary Alumni Global Service Award is none other than Tom Sauer. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Tom. Tom is an associate professor of international projects politics at the University of Antwerp, Belgium. He heads the research group International Politics and has um, three more forthcoming with more than 250 academic popular articles. He's a regular contributor to the national and international media. Tom was awarded the title of Peace Ambassador by Pax Christie Flanders in 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, again, please welcome Tom Sauer and help me recognize him with this crystal. Tom Sauer. Congratulations. Sorry, Bumpy. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to address the Rotary International Convention. Uh, I would like to thank Bart Vermeer and Guy Esle for my nomination, as well as Rotary District 1630 <laughs> and Rotary Club de Senderlo, which sponsored my ambassadorial scholarship for making this possible. But above all, I would like to thank my wife, Astrid, because all the time that I've spent on global service, I could not spend on service at home. Thank you so much, Astrid. I still remember my first experience with Rotary. I was 25 and was being interviewed for a Rotary ambassadorial scholarship. Apart from my studies in the French and Dutch-speaking part of Belgium, I had already spent a year studying in England and in Italy. And on the Rotary application form, you have to indicate where you want to go. And I put Harvard University at the top of my list. What else? And the Rotary scholarship made that dream a reality. In the summer of 1997, Astrid and I left Belgium for the United States. We were just married. It was like an extended honeymoon. And our first daughter, Tine, was born in the USA. Harvard's Kennedy School of Government is an academic paradise. I saw the world while I was there. Nelson Mandela received an honorary doctorate. Chinese President Yang Zemin gave a speech. And Sadako Ohata spoke. She was UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Mrs. Ohata received this Rotary Award two years ago. At Harvard, I worked on my PhD, which dealt with US nuclear weapons policy after the Cold War, and why so little had changed as the global threat level eased. I interviewed 70 people, including people in the White House and in the Pentagon, I had regular contact with professors who had been political appointees in the Clinton administration and later on in the Obama administration. They have remained important contacts in my professional life. 
And I've no doubt that my two years stay at Harvard, thanks to a Rotary Scholarship, helped me become a professor at the University of Antwerp. Thank you. Each year I'm surprised how many students, Belgian and foreigners, like to follow my nuclear weapons arms control seminar. And my students do not understand why there are still 15,000 nuclear weapons on Earth, while the few nuclear weapon states had promised in an international treaty more than 50 years ago to get rid of these nuclear weapons. Each of those weapons is on average 30 times more powerful than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs that devastated those cities. We are lucky that nuclear weapons have not been used since then. But luck cannot hold forever. On average, every eight years, another state acquires nuclear weapons. Today, there is a new risk of a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. Terrorist organizations have shown interest. My conclusion, after having studied thoroughly, is that the only realistic way to prevent the use of these weapons is to eliminate them. Not only... <laughs> to eliminate them. Not only North Korea, but also the United States, China, Russia, and so on. It won't be easy, it won't be for tomorrow, but let's aim at 2045, 100 years after Hiroshima, and start now. In 2017, two years ago, 122 states, that means two-thirds of all states in the world, have negotiated a treaty to prohibit, to ban nuclear weapons just like chemical and biological weapons have been banned. I urge the nine nuclear armed states and their allies, including my own country, to take the concerns of the rest of the world very seriously. If not, the whole non-proliferation regime may crumble. Recently, I was proud to help convince the biggest Belgian bank to divest from nuclear weapons related business. Customers and employees care about how their money is invested, and sometimes CEOs do as well. They do not want to see their own money being invested in weapon systems that are regarded as immoral, inhumane, and in the foreseeable future, in all likelihood, illegal. Throughout my academic career, I have not limited myself to writing academic journal articles. Each of us, including you, has to make up his or her mind about issues of war and peace, including nuclear weapons, climate change, and the environment. These issues cannot be left solely to experts, diplomats, and politicians. If politicians feel that people care, they will be more eager to change the policy for the better. And so I make my voice heard whenever I can. So let us try to make the world a better place, each of us starting at home. Thank you, Rotary.